Hey folks, uh, this lesson is isosceles and equilateral triangles. So we're in integrated math one, and so this module is module 22.2. So don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. Okay, let's get started here. So our question here is, uh, what are the special relationships between uh, among the angles and the sides of isosceles and equilateral triangles? Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. So we start off with some definitions. So an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has uh, at least two congruent sides. And I, I'm going to pretend like that at that word at least is not there that's it, a triangle that has two congruent sides because if it has three congruent sides now that's something else okay but uh i've been teaching for 20 something years anyways and they always say at least and so um uh, equilateral is three equal sides so anyways on an isosceles triangle if it is isosceles where there's two equal sides these congruent sides are called the legs right there, okay? And so where these legs come together, they form that angle up on top, and that angle that's formed by those legs is called the vertex angle. So here, angle B is the vertex angle. Okay, and then the side opposite uh, that vertex angle is called the base right there. So right here, this is the base, okay? So an isosceles triangle has two legs. It has a verte vertex angle, and it has a base right there, okay? And then so uh, the AC is the base right there, and then those angles at the bottom um, uh, that are the, they're called the base angles right there, okay? So here, angle C and angle Angle A and angle C are called the, the base angles right there, okay? All right, and so here's a theorem on, on isosceles triangles. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then those base angles are going to be congruent also, okay? So uh, if, uh, if this side equals this side, and then that means that this angle here equals this angle here, or angle A is congruent to angle C right there. Remember, the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C, or you write uh, angle A is congruent to angle C, okay? So if you have congruency symbols, then you have you do not have a little M right there. And if you do have an M right there, it's going to be an equal symbol. So the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C, or angle A is congruent to angle C. And similarly, you guys, if it, the segment AB is congruent to segment BC, then the measure of AB is equal to the measure of BC. Okay, just some semantics on that. And then this is the way um, uh, most textbooks like to write this, is base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Okay, so here's our isosceles triangle. These base angles are congruent. Okay, so this theorem says right here, if these two sides are equal, then the, the angle opposite this side is equal to the angle opposite this side, okay? So two sides equal, then the opposite angles are equal. I like this one much better. Base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Okay, an equilateral triangle is a triangle that has all three sides congruent, like that, okay? And then here's an equiangular triangle. An equiangular triangle is with all three angles congruent. So check this out. Don't these guys look the same right here except for the different letters and the markings? Here we have the three sides equal. Here we have the three angles equal. Well, it's pretty easy to prove, you guys, and it's on page, I think, um, uh, 1100 in your textbook. Since it's um, since it's equilateral, it's also isosceles because these two sides are equal. And if these two sides are equal, then these two angles are equal, A equals C. Similarly, since these two sides are equal, then these two angles, the angles opposite, are equal. So, so by the substitution property, I can say angle A equals angle B equals angle C. So that's what this says right here. If it's equilateral, then it's also equiangular. Okay, so Equilateral triangles are also equiangular tri triangles. So if you see markings like that, then you can conclude that. Okay, and then the other theorem, the converse of this theorem says equiangular triangles are also equilateral triangles. So if you see three angles equal in a, in a in a triangle, then that means all three sides are equal. Okay, all right, so we're going to use these guys. 
to find some values of sides and angles and stuff. And so these proofs I kind of showed you, uh, but they also can be found on page 1100 right there. Okay, so find the indicated measures. Okay, so this says we have an equilateral triangle. So that means this side equals this side equals this side. I do not know why they showed that these two angles are equal, but they did. I'm pulling this right out of your, your textbook right here. But since it's equilateral, I could have just uh, put another arc symbol right there. I should have, but your book only put them right there. I don't know why. But anyways, it says find the length of each side. Okay, it's equilateral, so this side equals this side, so we're going to go ahead and set it up and say uh, 6x minus 5 equals 4x plus 7. This side equals this side. I like to have the big, the bigger variable on the left-hand side, so I want to have the 6x over here and the 4x over here. So you can do the 4x plus 7 over here and the 6x minus 5 over here. That's fine. Okay, all right. Now, now your textbook would like you to um, state uh, what you're doing right there, and I kind of would like you to also. Okay, but my students, uh, if it's written in purple, and this is purple for you colorblind uh, folks, uh, my son's colorblind by the way, he sometimes can't see that, and sometimes it looks blue. Anyway, um, uh, so what we did is we added 5 to both sides. Here's an equation, so what you do to the left, you got to do to the right. So we added 5 to both sides, so that's called the addition property of equality. 7 plus 5 is 12, 4x, and then those cancel, so 6x over here, okay? Now, to keep solving, we're going to subtract 4x from both sides, so the subtraction property. Okay, so when we, did I, yeah, did I say 4x? Uh, yeah, I wrote 2x right there. Sorry. Anyways, that's supposed to be a, a 4x, and right there, and right there. Sorry, you're going to see 2x in the in the next couple of slides. I'll fix that before I start teaching this class, so only you guys will see that. But 6x minus 4x is 2x. Okay, so 2 goes into 12. How many times 2 go into 12? It goes in there uh, 6 times, okay? So x equals 6. All right, so that's not what it's asking for, you guys. Never mind what I'm doing right there. Um, it's asking for uh, find the length of each side. So it's not asking to find x. We're going to find uh, the length of the side. So we can plug in x equals 6 on this side or x equals 6 on this side because it's equilateral. So go ahead and plug in x equals 6 right there. I know you guys are going to get bugged on that. Me too. I'm going to put the 4 right there. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, anyways, and, and so we're going to go ahead and plug that in. And so when we plug that in, um, uh, we get 6x minus 5, or 6 times 6 minus 5, and when, uh, sorry, uh, 6 times 6 is uh, uh, 36, 36 minus 5 is 31, and so this was an application problem. It talked about the lengths of the sides being in centimeters, so we're going to go ahead and answer it in the context of the problem that's in your textbook, you guys, so it's going to be 31 centimeters right there, okay? All right, so let me finish that and finish that, and then we'll do one more problem, and we'll be done. So... All right, so this one says find uh, the measure of angle T. Okay, so check out these markings right here. It says these two sides are equal. Okay, well, if these two sides are equal, then it's isosceles, and that means this base angle equals this base angle. So base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. So if this is X, so is that right there. Then we're going to use our triangle sum theorem that all three angles add up to 180. So we're going to add up x plus x plus 3x equals 180 and combine like terms. Divide by 5 and we get x equals 36. Okay, now that's not the answer. It says find this angle right here, 3x. So we've got to plug in uh, 36 into 3x. So 3 times uh, 36 is a... Uh, 108 right there, okay? All right, this one says, did I say one more? I mean, went one more after that. <laughs> Anyways, this says, uh, find the measure of angle of, of uh, segment BC. So if there's nothing on top of it, it says, find the measure of BC. So it's equiangular from the markings right there. So that means it's also equilateral. So this side equals this side equals this side. So once I find Y, then I'm going to plug it into this one or this one and solve for um, 
solve for y, or solve for bc, sorry. So since this side equals this side, then we do uh, 3 uh, tenths y plus 9 equals 4 fifths y minus 1. And here I'm, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 10. Okay, so multiplication property. And then here we're going to use the distributive property and distribute that 10 through. And then here these, and the reason why we multiply both sides by 10 is that's our common denominator. And that gets rid of the fractions right there. So here the 10s cancel. We're left with 3y plus 90. Here 5 goes into 10 twice. 2 times 4y is 8y. 8y minus 10. Okay, so we get that. Now we just, just go ahead and solve that equation. So here I did the symmetric property because, and you don't have to do this, but I like to have the bigger variable on the, on the left-hand side. I'm just more comfortable with that. Okay, and then, uh, and then I added 10 to both sides, and then I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides. 5 times 20, so we divided both sides by 5 to get y equals 20. Remember, y is not the answer. This was another application problem in terms of uh, centimeters, so our answer is going to be in centimeters squared, so I just move that over. So it's equilateral. It says it was equilateral. Okay, actually it's equal angular, so it's also equilateral. So all the sides are equal. So we're going to go ahead and plug in um, uh, x or y equals 20 into, you can plug it into this one or this one, you'll get the same answer right there. So I plugged it into the 3 tenths, so 3 tenths times 20 is going to be, this goes in there twice, so 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15, so it's going to be uh, 15 uh, centimeters, okay? All right, you guys, if you are in my class, I would probably assign you that. There's your answers. Go ahead and pause it, you guys, because I'm going to click onto the next one. It's a proof, you guys. I gave you part of the answers. You can, you can figure out the next part, okay? All right, take care, you guys.